The social scientific approach to studying religion should anchor you in familiar territory, namely the social scientific methods characteristic of all sociological research. This brief lecture will then simply provide a few anchors for you in terms of connecting to other courses and other research uh, that you have done or read about. Basically, in sociology of religion, there are often three pillars of analysis. The examination or analysis of belief systems and behavior. Because belief systems border so closely on theology, this topic will be taken up again later. It's tough to see what people believe, and we will see in this unit that uh, mostly the examination of belief systems is done through uh, questionnaires and observations. Likewise with religious rituals and religious institutions. Belief systems consist of an ethos that's referred to by Weber as an ethical system, but an ethos can be broader than an ethical system. Uh, ethos or the study of ethos is characterized or found in the work of Geertz and Weber. The sacred and profane are often part of belief systems as found in the work of Durkheim. The hierophany means a beliefs about the process by which people encounter the sacred. Cosmogony or beliefs about the creation of the world. Anthropogeny or beliefs about the creation of humans. Theodicies or explanations or beliefs about the presence of evil and soteriologies or beliefs about how we are, in quotes, saved. Religious rituals are on far much more uh, familiar territory, especially since these are observable. Often within the framework of this course, the term religious ritual will be used interchangeably with liturgy. Many of you pointed out uh, the dis distinction or differences between those. Rituals can be solutions to problems. They are rooted in experience and grounded in experiences, and these experiences are experiences that are connected to beliefs about contact with the sacred earth or with God. They demarcate boundaries and definitions for evil. Rituals include both rational and non-rational elements. So, for example, the funeral contains both rational and non-rational elements. They reinforce and reify social processes. Randall Collins has a great term for this as an outcome called collective effervescence, which is also first found in the work of uh, Emil Durkheim. Institutions is in and it of itself a topic that we will take up later in the semester. Sociologists have suggested the following types or categories for religious groups. Ecclesiastic institutions, that is national religions or churches. Denominations. Sects, which, are, are, which can be break-offs from religions, or they can be institutionalized sects, such as the Latter-day Saints. Cults are new religious movements, which can be individualistic and shamanistic or they can be collective, such as the Branch Davidians. The social science research methods requires investigators to disengage as much as possible from personal biases to gather and interpret information. Social science methods can be quantitative or qualitative. In the humanities, these are used as metaphors or sensitizing concepts and in social science, we often use text or textual materials uh, in much like the humanities or also to quantify the frequency or observation of uh, words or keywords or themes within text over time. Uh, triangulation, as most of you know, means the bringing together of multiple uh, research strategies and methods. In quantitative methodology, First, as, as most everybody knows in this course, social scientists or sociologists use a scientific method. We formulate hypotheses, uh, select a research design, collect data to, uh, to verify or refute our findings. Uh, we analyze and interpret the results 
and then we report our findings. Uh, in this unit, also, we will deal with survey research and statistical analysis. Especially important or significant are the Pew data, uh, a huge national, international uh, survey research institution with extensive data on international religion uh, or religions, and the ARDA, or the ARDA uh, measurement and wizard instrument, which you can find on the course site. Ethnography and participant observation are also frequently used by sociologists of religion. These are close-up descriptions and analyses. You will use these in this course in your research on local congregations or a local congregation. This is the methodology frequently used by anthropologists and qualitative sociologists or field work. Remember that we do have human subjects rules and there are many possible topics, uh, including uh, the use of field work for preliminary re research and also another topic or another uh, research assignment in SOCH 221 will be uh, in-depth interviews of two people. They won't be so in-depth, but they will be enough to give you a feel for how uh, interview, the interview process works. Textual and historical criticism are often used by uh, scholars of religion and other disciplines. We also use them, uh, and especially uh, in the examination or analysis of news or other contemporary texts from a scientific or disinterested point of view. Uh, typically, we would use comparative historical analysis or content analysis. This is very different than the type of textual analysis used in uh, biblical, biblical literalism or, humor, or uh, interpretation, hermeneutics as it's called. We might compare within a religion two versions of a story or a comparison of a theme across religion or a comparison of the same religion uh, in different contexts. This week we'll really acclimate ourselves to or orient ourselves toward the empirical side of the sociology of religion and you will begin your project on uh, the observation of a local congregation.